8, I want to preach to you a message this morning entitled, The Welcome and the Rejection of Jesus. And we notice all through uh, the New Testament, Jesus was both welcomed and he was rejected. And friend, today, what will you do with the Lord? Will you welcome him or will you reject him? And in this chapter, and I'm going to read and preach as we go verses, read the scripture and then uh, preach to you, but I don't know how far we'll get. But we see here in Luke chapter number 8, we see that Christ uh, continues his ministry and his miracles. And you study the gospels and you'll see the many miracles of Christ. You'll see his ministry and you'll see that Jesus... A man was a man that after he began his public ministry, he spent his time doing just exactly that. And we see that some people accepted him and others ridiculed him, others rejected him, but many came to know him. Now friend, as we go through our lives as believers, as Christians, we ought to want to present Christ to others through the way we live or through uh, the gospel message that we can present to them through our testimony but we should want to present Christ to others. We're living in the last days. I don't know if you realize that or not, but we're living in perilous times. Uh, we're living in a day where the world is all helter-skelter, so to speak. Uh, Russia is becoming a, a big influence in the world today, and America is becoming less an influence. Uh, I believe the Soviet Union is, is are trying to gather back together and, and become one. Uh, you see that what's going on in Ukraine today, that's all not, uh, not just coincidence, but that's all lining up with scriptures when the bear of the north comes down. But I'll tell you something, friend. My God in heaven is still God. He still knows what's going on. We're living in the last days of time. And if there's someone that you love that's going to hell, you better witness to them. You better tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ that they might come to know the Lord. You better live your life so as to please God. It's time, friend, that we lay down our life of, of, uh, of uh, where we think, you know, everything's going all right and everything's going good, and it may be. But we ought to have a sense of urgency about us about proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Christ went through his ministry. <coughs> and in Luke chapter number 8, we'll begin reading with verse number, 20, verse number 26. <clears throat> Luke chapter number 8, verse number 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. I told you the wrong verse, did I not? I'm thinking, how am I going to preach this when that's not even close to what, I'm, to what I'm preaching? Now I've got to find my scripture. You know why? Because I was in chapter 9. Getting a big way of preaching, you don't know what you're doing. Amen. All right. Time out, time back in. Verse number 26. I wonder, why is everybody, why is everybody uh, wanting to uh, do their, you know, flipping through their pages? Amen. All right. Cha verse number 26, chapter number 8. Everybody with me? Maybe I ought to turn back over here and preach this other verse. Amen. That was getting pretty good, and I was fixing to, fixing to start out on it. But amen. Verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils. Long time, and listen, and wear no clothes. Neither abode he in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oft times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there... Uh, was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and they and the herd ran violently down the a steep place into the lake and were choked. And they that fed them saw what was done. They fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. 
And then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out, out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Now we see here this story, we hear this story about this man uh, of the gatherings. I don't know his name, but I've heard the, the message preached uh, uh, you know, many times. I've read the story. But Jesus, remember, had left the, uh, the, the uh, Galilee and he had come across to the gatherings. Now, on the way across, we know from last Sunday that he calmed the great storm in, in the lives of, of his disciples. And he calmed the great storm and we use that to illustrate how God today can, can still calm the storm in our life. And until he does, he will keep us safe till the storm passes by. So now he has arrived at the, at the uh, land of, Gader, of, of Gadara. And at the land of Gadara, there is one man that is, on, that is on that side that's going to accept Jesus. He must needs go through Samaria, remember, the woman at the well? He must go, needs go through Samaria because there was one there that wanted to hear about him. So here he must needs goes to Gadara because there is one that is full of the devil running around in the tombs. They say, you know, the, the story goes such as this. A man sitting in his house and, and he, he, he is so possessed of the devil that he can't stay there. And they try to bind him and try to hold him down so that he can't go away. But all the, all the chains, all the fetters, all that holds him down, he rips apart and he runs to the tombs. And the tombs there are caves. They're, you know, the side of a mountain full of caves. And there he, he uh, lives his life. And he lives his life tearing himself, gnashing himself with his teeth. He rips off all of his clothes and he runs about naked in the tombs. Friends, you say that could not possibly happen. I'll tell you something. The devil, if he gets a hold of a person, will cause them to do things that otherwise they would not do. And a lost man full of the devil is a dangerous man. And friend, I'll tell you, this man was without God, without hope. But I'm thankful that Jesus saw him in his condition, hallelujah, and said, I'm going to go where he's at. So he went over there and, and immediately the man saw him and fell down at his feet. And the demons within him recognized who this man Jesus was. They saw him for who he was, knew who he was. And he said, come out of there. And those demons came out of this man. And they said, suffer us not to go out into the deep. So the, the, he put him into the pigs. He said, all right, there's swine over there. Now Jews had no dealings with swine. It was against their, uh, you know, they, they were an unclean animal. They couldn't eat them, couldn't have nothing to do with them. But these people had swine and the herders had swine. And so Jesus said, let them go out to those pigs. So they came out of those, uh, that man, the legions, meaning thousands, came out of that man and went running into those pigs. Those pigs had better sense than that man did. Because when the devil entered them, they run and drown themselves, amen. They run off, and I've been over there where that took place, and it is a very steep bank, but a very steep cliff uh, where those pigs ran off there and ran into the sea and drowned themselves, uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, they didn't want to have nothing to do with it. But we see the next thing in this man is that he was <coughs> accepted of Christ, and he was clothed, and he's his right mind. I'm going to tell you something, friend, when Jesus gets a hold of you, when God gets a hold of you, it'll cause you to be in your right mind. It caused him to put his clothes back on. I'm very leery of people that want to take the clothing off, especially if they're children, I mean, Christians, so to speak, and they want to run and take all their clothes off in the summertime. And Oh, yeah, friend, oh, yeah. They want to wear the shortest thing they can find in the, on the bottom and the shortest thing they can find on top. Amen. Listen to me now. If the shoe fits, put it on. And, and uh, they want to do all of that and name the name of Christ and you can't tell the difference in the rest of them. This man put his clothes back on instead of taking them off and I'll leave that right there. Think about it. Amen. Oh my, he, he was clothed and in his right mind. I've been told many times I, didn't, I wasn't in my right mind. 
Sometimes I'm not in my right mind, but it ain't because of the devil, amen. I'm just a little loony once in a while. I've got a screw loose, amen, and I know that. But I want to know, I want to tell you something, friend. My Jesus in heaven, when he got a hold of me, he saved me by his grace. And I'll tell you something, friend. God did something in my life when I accepted him. And this man of the Gadarenes, he was ripping and roaring and tearing through the country. And Jesus came along, and the next time you see him, he's close, sitting down in his right mind, talking to his family, amen. He's making, he's making something out of what God gave him. And he's clothed and he's not listening. He ain't running the tombs no more. He ain't cutting himself. And he goes back home, I believe, to his family. And Jesus tells him there, he said, Now, now, now you go on in verse number, verse number 30, 39, verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. How great thou art. I believe this, listen, we'll see here in just a minute what else happened. But this man was the only witness to his people. This man was the only missionary to his people. I read nowhere else in Scripture where Jesus ever returned to, to the gathering, to, the, to this same place. Now, the story is recorded in, in Matthew and in Mark, but I find nowhere else in Jesus' ministry that, that he uh, went back to uh, the city of Gadara. But there was one there. There was one there to plant the seed. And what did he do? He went back and, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done for him. You know what happened? when Jesus gets a hold of you he'll do something for you and you'll want to tell somebody else what's wrong with us older Christians is we let that get old and dim in our lives we get let that get old in our hearts sometimes and we, we lose the joy of, a, of, of being a, a first Christian of being saved we sometimes lose that joy and we don't want to tell it we forget a little bit what Jesus has done for you and I and friend I'd still be on my way to hell or there if Jesus hadn't saved me but thank God by his grace he did and God helped me that I'll be willing to tell the story when I have the opportunity God put in me the drive that this man had to go and tell the whole country about the Lord and friend that's exactly what he did so this man we see that he, in, he that he accepted Christ, the demons were cast out, the, uh, the Gadarian man accepted Christ, and then he went and testified of the good things Jesus had done. Now, we see next of all, we see uh, in verse number 36, they also, we saw it, told them by what means he was possessed of the devil, was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the, of the Gadarenes round about him besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now we've got a whole country here that meets with Jesus. The whole country, it says the whole country, the whole multitude of the country. With one vote, with one voice, said we don't want you around here. That's what they told Jesus. We don't want you around here. We're afraid of you. You see, he had, he, had, he had interrupted their money because they lost that herd of swine and uh, uh, fearful for what else they might lose if he stayed around there rather than them seeing the miracle. Hey, you know, they saw him healed, but they didn't, they didn't, un they didn't really catch on what Jesus had done for that man. <coughs> They were just interested in their own personal wealth and well-being. But look, Jesus had just cast the devil out of a man. And now he was clothed in his right mind, yet they won't recognize that. And the whole multitude of the whole country came against Christ and said, We don't want you here. We don't want you around. So Jesus being the sensitive man that he is, Believe me, friend, Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, is a sensitive person. And Christ being as sensitive as he is to man's wants and needs, all right, I'll go. I'll leave you. I'll depart from you. He shook the dust off of his soles of his sandals and he went away. And like I say, as far as I know in Scripture, if you find it, you can tell me and I'll apologize. But I don't find where he went back to gather... Gadara, I find out in history that 40 years later, 
The historian Josephus tells us that 40 years later, the Roman Empire demolished Gadara, took over that city, and Christ never went back there. But there was one boy. Now, do I believe, I believe that this man of the Gadarenes, I believe after he got out and went and testified to all the people, I believe he became the missionary of that country. Were many saved? I don't know. The Bible don't tell us. But I've got to believe that there was some in there that because of this man's testimony that they believed Jesus and they wanted what? that You know, man, what do you do? You get around some... I've been around people mean as a devil. I mean, just, just mean. Look at you and, and, and hurt you without doing a thing. Just mean people. And yet get right with the Lord. I remember one fella in my childhood and he was, he was a... a very much a drunk in the community. And uh, several of them around there, but this one particular stands out to me because I got the word, and I was just a little boy, I got the word I, that he got saved. I used to go around him. And see that man, you know, I go the other direction. I don't be around him. He might hurt me. But I seen him one day after I heard that he got saved and I wasn't afraid, and I went by where he was at, and he was, listen, he was an alcoholic, and he, you know, uh, he, loved his, he loved his liquor. But I saw him standing there at, a, at a, a place of the community, and he was crying out to God, asking God for his help. I said, hallelujah, I thought in my heart later on. That's what God can do for anyone that will accept him. I want to ask you something today, friend. If you don't know the Lord, will you accept him today, or will you tell him to go away? If you're, not, if you're here lost without God and you don't know him, will you accept him today or will you tell him to go away? I don't want you. That's what these people did and Christ never went back. Listen, church, I'll tell you something. We as a church, what we need more than anything else is the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. As long as we've got the presence of the Spirit of God, God can do something at our church. Amen. As long as we can come here and feel that we have been helped by the Holy Ghost of God, thank God we got a reason to come to the house of God. Amen. I've come before, and I've just, you know, I've been here, what, almost four years now. And uh, I, I've been here before, and I've, I've left the house, and I thought, oh, Lord, I can't. I just, I don't have, God, I just can't do it. See, I'm honest with you. Most preachers say they never have that problem. Well, I, they're lying. And, and they just, you know, they just don't want to tell the truth. But I tell you, I've come before Lord, you know, feeling like I, you know, feeling like I could walk under the door back there instead of through it. Walk in and feel the presence of God. No, oh, hallelujah, all of a sudden, hey amen, the devil has to go aside and get behind the pulpit and God lets us preach the word of God. I'm going to tell you something, there's nothing like the touch of the Holy Ghost of God in the presence of the house of God. Friend, we ought to always invite him in. I'd ask you when you come to church on Sunday morning before you get here, say, Lord, meet us there. See, God, God loves your invitation. God loves for you to invite him in. But I'll tell you something, if we get to the place where we don't need God, amen, then we're in bad shape. We're in bad shape. Well, I've been places where, you know, I've told you before, I've been places where, you know, you wonder if God ever was there to start with. You know, it's probably not true, but it's cold and, and the people are cold and everybody looks like they're made out of stone. Everybody grin at me real big so I make sure I ain't. Yeah, no rocks here today. But, every, you know, and, no, and nobody wants to ever have any fun, Brother Max. I mean, they don't want to ever smile or laugh. Even Brother Max is smiling. Hey, man. But listen, where would we be without the Lord as a church? Where would we be without the presence of the Spirit of God at the house of God? We might as well pack up, go to the house, and enjoy whatever we can at home. Amen. So this man, he enjoyed the presence of God, and he enjoyed him, and he went and published it abroad. So we see that we see Christ accepted by the wild man of Gadara, and we see him rejected by the people, and he went away and never did come back. Oh, friend, let's do not ever quench the Spirit of God at the house of God, but make Him welcome. Amen? Then we see 
the reception of Jesus. Now, he went away, and what did he do? He went back to the country from whence he came. He went back there in, in verse number uh, verse number 39, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. Amen. For they were all waiting for him. Now get this picture in your mind. I drive in the church this morning, cars everywhere. Amen. Make, you know what excite preacher as much as anything is seeing people at the house of God. Amen. Not because you come to hear me preach, because you want to come to church here from heaven. Amen. Now, if everybody in here that's here this morning comes back next Sunday, and I hope you don't bring somebody with you. But if you come walking through them doors back there, hello, camera, I'll be back in a minute. Amen, come in singing the praises of God. Amen. Boy, Lord, I hope you show up here today. God, I want you to be here. Will you come and be with us? And you leave your house coming expecting God to show up. Look. Them on the other side, when he came back to where he was at, he, they, they was waiting for him to come back. Have you seen anybody seen the boat yet where Jesus left on? He left us earlier. Have you, has anybody seen that boat coming back? We want him to come back. We enjoyed being around him. We enjoyed his presence. And we want to see Jesus coming back. And somebody looks out there across, hey, I see a boat coming. And they begin to tell us, hey, the boat's coming, the boat's coming. As it gets closer, somebody says, is it Jesus? Yeah, it's Jesus. I see him. He's standing at the helm. He's waiting. And they gather around. And as he, as he comes on board, they welcomely receive him. Now listen, how well do you receive? Listen, if you come expecting something at the house of God, you're going to get it. I come expecting something today. Amen. Guess what? He ain't never found me yet. Amen. And if you come looking for something at the house of God, you'll find it. If you don't come looking for something, you won't find nothing, and you'll go away just like you come. But if you come saying, man, I want to hear from God today. I need some help. The world's crazy. People around me are crazy. I feel like I'm going crazy. I need help of the Lord. And guess what? If you're there, if he, you come. He'll come back, he'll come to the house of God, he'll meet us here. We'll receive him with gladness, as the Bible said. So they received him with gladness. So we see here that he had a great, rece a great a reception when he got back to the other side. God should always be received happily into our midst at the house of the Lord. And then we also see here, uh, not only was he, did he have a glad reception, but we see that he heals a dejected woman. He heals a dejected woman. Now, he came back, they gladly received him, and behold, there came a, a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come unto his house. For, it, for he, had only, he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Everybody wanted to get around Jesus. Let me read it before I get to preaching. And Jesus said, and a young, verse 43, And a young woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stank. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter said, They that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and thou say, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him that before the people, for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Now get this picture in your mind. I don't get to preach tonight, so I'm going to take a few more minutes this morning. Amen. Get this picture in your mind. This woman had had an issue of blood 12 years. According to Levitical law, she had been unclean for 12 years. She couldn't get around anybody. 
if she got around anybody and touched anybody, they were, they were proclaimed unclean, and they had to go and wash. For 12 long years, she had lived in that condition. But somewhere along her, uh, her lifetime, in the last little bit, she'd heard of this man, Jesus, that he could heal her. She'd, I believe she'd exhausted all her, her uh, the, you know, doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with her. And, and she came to Jesus <coughs> knowingly that he, if she could just get near him, if she could touch him, you know. Well, her being in the crowd, nobody being able to touch her, she not being able to touch nobody, she said, I guess God will get close enough that I can touch the hem of his garment. If I can just get up there and just, just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Amen. So she made her way through the crowd, bumping people, moving out of the way. She gets to Jesus and said, he's right there. I'm close enough, I'm going to touch him. She touched the hem of his garment. Amen, friend, let me tell you something. Anytime you get close enough to Jesus to touch him, thank God he's going to do something in your life. Amen. So she got close enough, she touched the hem of his garment, and immediately she was healed. Twelve, Twelve years of that she had suffered. One touch of the master and she was made whole. Now, did she believe there was virtue in his garment? I don't believe she did. Did she believe that there was virtue in being in that crowd around everybody else? don't believe she did. I believe she had faith to believe that she could just touch his garment that she'd get saved. And that's what happened. She was saved from her sin, I believe, because of her faith, and she was saved from that physical illness because of her faith. Now, of course, the crowd around her, you know, the... <coughs> I don't know, there may have been other sick folks that day around Jesus that didn't have the faith she had. People bumped into him, crowd that big. Somebody had to bump into him from time to time. Get close enough, thrown by people. He's, people touched him. But when she touched him, she knew that because of her faith, that virtue or strength, because he was a man, Virtue or strength had gone out of him, and he perceived that, and he said, who touched me? And, of course, they read, oh, you know, Lord, everybody's around here. A lot of people have bumped into you and touched you. But he said, this one, somebody touched me that had faith. Someone touched me that believed. And virtue has gone out of me. And the woman, knowing that she couldn't hide it any longer, she said, it's me. <laughs> it's me, dear Lord. Jesus said, by faith has made thee whole go in peace. Let me tell you something, friend. If you get down and out and rejected and dejected and you feel like the world's turned upside down on you, just get close enough to touch the Lord. Get close enough to touch the hem of His garment and you watch Him help you and you expect Him to help you and God will. By faith, God will help us. So this woman was terribly dejected by sin, de dejected by, by sickness, dejected by people. Nobody wanted to have anything to do with her. But once she got a hold of the Lord, her whole life was changed by the power of God. Old friend, today I don't know what your condition is spiritually. I don't know what your condition is mentally or physically or anything else. But I'll tell you something. If you get a hold of God, God will do something for you. I'm not promising you He'll heal all your diseases. I know He can, but I'm not promising you that God will. But I promise you a good measure of grace that God will help you through your problems. Amen. Whether it be sickness, whether it be emotional, whether it be mental, whatever it is, God in heaven, if you'll touch him, he'll help you. So if you feel dejected today, come to the Lord. And then we see that, we see that Christ was scorned by people's unbelief. Verse number 49. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the, as the, ruler of the, from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. Now this was where he was going to start with, but on the way, somebody got God. Amen. Somebody received Christ. Somebody got healed. And then they come tell him, I don't worry about it. She's already dead. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. So he heard him. Listen, Jesus knows everything. <coughs> he says, Fear not, she shall be made whole. When he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden and all 
wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, these weepers and these mourners were, in that day, if someone died and they didn't have enough family to weep and mourn, they would hire people to come in and mourn the death of their loved one. That was part of the tradition, part of the custom. So a lot of these were probably hired to come in and, and weep and mourn at this uh, dead daughter. But Jesus said, I Weep not, she's just asleep, she's just sleeping. And they looked, laughed him to scorn, ridiculed him, knowing that, that she was dead. They'd come to the conclusion that she's dead. She's quit breathing. She's not, she's not alive. Christ said she's just asleep. And they laughed at him. They derided him. How many times in Christ's life was he derided? How many times was he made fun of? How many times was he ridiculed? But guess what? He's still Jesus. He still knows best. He still knows right. He's still God. So they laughed him to scorn because of unbelief. You know what, folks, today when people don't believe Jesus, they're making fun, they're mocking. I believe Jesus can still save sinners. I believe Jesus can still heal the sick. I believe he can still do whatever he wants to by the way of a miracle because he's God. And friend, we should accept the facts of who Jesus is and accept the fact that what he did then he can do now. If he, if he desires to, it's all up to him. But they laughed at him. They made fun of him. They mocked at him. Why, you don't know what you're talking about. They did not believe in him. They did not have faith in Jesus. So what did Jesus do? They laughed him to scorn and knowing that she was dead and he put them all out and took her by the hand and called saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. So, she came back to life because Jesus said, arise. A friend, you may be here today, today, and you're dead spiritually. You're lost without God. You have no hope. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But friend, if you're here today, man, woman, boy, or girl, church member, not a church member, deacon, Sunday school teacher, preacher, whoever, if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, you're dead in trespasses and sins. If you can't go back and remember when Jesus saved you by his grace, listen, something as important as salvation, you're going to remember. You might not remember every detail, but you're going to remember the day that you got right with God, got saved. If you can't go back and remember that, like I say, you might not remember the exact date, you might not remember the exact time of the day, but you'll remember the day when you said yes to the Lord Jesus. If you can't, if, you know, if you can't know for a, beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved, it doesn't matter who you are. You're dead in trespasses and sin, and you're going to die and go to hell without God. Now, Jesus is meeting with us here this morning. Jesus knows you. He knows me. You can't, you might, listen, you might hide it from mom or dad. You might hide it from husband or wife, but you'll never hide your lost condition before Almighty God. He knows. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, there'd be no, other, no better day for you to come to know him than to know him today. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, but what, preacher, what will people think about me if I, if I was to come to that altar and get saved? They think you got saved, amen? What would you think about me if I come to the altar and got saved? Amen, I'd say, praise the Lord, I'm glad you got in. My oldest daughter made a profession when she was young. And at the age of 14, while I was preaching the Word of God, I saw her step out. Now, she, look, she sung in the choir. She sung with a group, and, and uh, she did all the things she's supposed to do. But I was preaching one Sunday morning, and on the right-hand side of the aisle, down between the pew and down between the pew and the wall, I saw my daughter step out. The last person in the world I expected to come out of that uh, seat and come to get saved was my, my oldest daughter. She stepped out of there and she come down. I saw conviction on her face and she got down and then she got right with the Lord. She got born again by the grace of God. People say, well, that's a preacher's daughter. What would you think? Oh, hallelujah, she got in. Amen. She's not going to hell. She's not deceived. She got saved. Amen. And I've said many times I wouldn't go to hell for nobody. 
I wouldn't go to hell because of pride. I wouldn't go to hell because of my family. I wouldn't go to hell because of mom, dad, brother and sister, husband or wife, amen. I'd put all of that aside and throw my pride away and say, I'm going to get to God. God's dealing with me and I'm going to get saved or else I'll go to hell without God. There's nothing worth going to hell over, my friend. Now, this young lady that was dead, Christ said, don't worry, she's just sleeping. He raised her from the dead. He gave to her new life. That's what God can do for you today if you, don't, if you don't know Him. That's what He can do for you. He can deliver you. He delivered this young girl and the parents were amazed. I want to ask you something. Have you felt this morning the touch of God? Everybody bow your head, no one looking around. Do you know this Jesus that I've been preaching to you this morning? I hope I've said something. If you're saved by the grace of God, I hope I've said something.